public uh, management in Kenya. He has over 15 years of experience that uh, entails citizen engagement, service delivery, uh, national and uh, uh, local government uh, governance. Uh, he has also done research on uh, policy, is uh, also done policy analysis and advocacy, uh, capacity building, training, and done uh, talks on matters education. Uh, he's uh, been involved in research uh, and he spent some time coaching and training young people. Uh, he served in different boards, among them the Youth Agenda, the International Institute for Legislative Affairs. And um, I want to say that he's a speaker, contemporary speaker who is engaged on different public uh, talk shows uh, on devolution, uh, politics, and governance. Uh, his uh, PhD is from Germany uh, and in 2017 and where he also uh, uh, did his master's uh, through the scholarship program that is facilitated by DAD. That's that. So I'm happy to say that uh, the speaker is also known to myself. Uh, he was my uh, uh, boss when I was serving as the executive director, or sorry, as the CEO of uh, the International Institute for Legislative Affairs. So um, I wish him well. And uh, my appetite is wet. So uh, I, th I think I think with that, I would say, uh, welcome, Abraham Rugo. Uh, you are speaking to Kenyans, uh, people who really want to understand this topic. Uh, Abraham, uh, when I shared the, uh, the flyer on uh, different platforms, there's a gentleman who said, we do not want to be lied to today. We want to hear the truth. Uh, so over to you. I think I don't want you to take an oath of office to say that I will speak nothing and nothing but the truth. Uh, but I just want to wish you well. And I look forward to this discussion. And Karibu uh, Sana Abram. So just for the record, uh, colleagues, we will have uh, uh, 40, 30 to 40 minutes uh, sharing by Abram Rugo. And then from there, we will have a plenary section where we will look at the notes that you will have shared online together with also giving some of us time to share. So over to you, uh, Dr. Rugo. You're muted. You're muted, Abraham. Good. Um, so thank you so much, uh, uh, Kimosop, for that very kind introduction. And uh, I want to hope that everybody can hear me uh, pretty well. I'm trying to get my slides to flow, uh, but I see they are they are jumping as soon as I move to um, to screen share. So what I'm going to do um, as I start, basically, I'm going to uh, say a couple of things, uh, and hopefully, I will have sorted this out uh, uh, in, a, in, a, in a in a in a minute. Um, uh, uh, the, the the topic that is ahead of us uh, uh, is uh, is critical um, and is important for us to be able then to reflect uh, on what this means for our country. Uh, I have, uh, uh, as Kimosop has said, I've had the chance to work uh, on, um, on, on 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 different topics uh, uh, in this country, um, and one of the things I want to start by uh, right away uh, stating is that uh, we all have a responsibility. We all have an obligation and a duty uh, to serve our country uh, wherever uh, uh, the Lord uh, leads us. I would like to also uh, stay and categorically that uh, I'm, a, I'm a born again Christian and it's my Christian faith uh, and a follow, being a follower of Jesus that has convinced me uh, of the need for us to be stewards uh, stewards of the resources that God has put in our hands, stewards of the things that God desires uh, that we achieve uh, for, our, for our country. But rightly to say that we have not always been faithful. A lot of us have uh, uh, spent a lot of time complaining, pointing fingers, uh, uh, you know, uh, murmuring and grumbling against, uh, against our leader, and rightly so, uh, uh, and very justified. But I think the question I want to, to ask to try and attempt answer this evening is have we done our part? Have we done our reasonable uh, 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 duty, civic duty as citizens 
civic duty as human beings living in this space uh, called Kenya that God has put us in. And perhaps then we can advance it to even asking, have we done our Christian duty uh, of working to ensure uh, that justice flows like a river and that there is mercy in the land and that the righteousness uh, of God rules uh, in, in our country. Um, so having said that, I want to attempt a second attempt uh, to, to get us going. Uh, Kimosop, tell me if now you can see it a bit more. Uh, 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 very well, you're good. Thank you. Um, so the, 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 the discussion of this uh, 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 today is on matter of public debt. Now, um, why debt and where do we stand as a country? Now, the country I'm referring to is the Republic of Kenya. Uh, that constitutes of a national government uh, 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 led by one uh, president Uhuru Kenyatta and the 47 county governments led by the different uh, uh, governors. But for purposes of today, our conversation is gonna focus on the national government and not so much as the county government because it's a national government that is given by the constitution, the responsibility uh, and the uh, uh, basically the duty uh, to be able uh, uh, to procure debt on behalf uh, of the uh, uh, of the public uh, of Kenya, so uh, we, we 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 anticipate that. Yes, so we anticipate that uh, our, our 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 responsibilities for governance are going to be handled in a way. Uh, that is of uh, uh, you know that is of integrity uh, in a way that is prudent uh, for that. So public debt is a means of plugging budget deficits. So as would happen even in your own uh, uh, environment uh, or in your own uh, household or at a personal level, that when you have an income of so much, but you have an expenditure of so much, if for instance you plan uh, to build a house of uh, 2 million shillings, but all the money that you have is a million shillings, then it means you have to raise the extra a million shillings through either a loan from your chama, uh, from your sacco, uh, or from the bank, or from which other uh, uh, spaces. So budget, public debt is a means, is a revenue. Uh, in other words, it's procured, therefore becomes revenue, but it's a way of uh, plugging in uh, budget deficits. We'll come back to what that has meant uh, in them. But it's to enable us to be able to invest today for returns tomorrow. Uh, 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 the bigger question, of course, is are the returns assured? So, in other words, are we investing in uh, spaces where uh, uh, you know uh, we are going to get any return uh, when 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 we need it, or is it like the uh, the man who was given one talent and decided to bury it under you know under a stone and had nothing to show uh, for it? The constitution. In Article 201, uh, the Public Finance uh, Management, Chapter 12, Article 201, states clearly that all public debt shall be procured in a way that the benefits and the burdens are shared between the current and future generations. And there is a question there to be asked, uh, is the public debt that we have incurred uh, bringing returns uh, 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 and benefits to our current generation and those uh, uh, and assuring uh, that there will be a return on invest, I mean, uh, there, there, there will be um, uh, uh, a benefit to future generations, or is it just passing burdens uh, from this current generation to the future generation? Uh, I, I beg to state that I think the burden is becoming bigger than the benefit. Uh, as, in. as of November 30th, and this is by the statement made by the uh, cabinet secretary, uh, Ambassador Okuri Atani to Parliament, our total debt stock stood at 7.12 against a limit of Kenya shillings, 9 trillion. Now, our limit is that Parliament did approve to change how much we can take. And I will try and break this down to the simplest of, of, of possibility. So take it that you have uh, your total worth, if you were to sell everything you own, uh, you would have 100 shillings. Uh, we would call that GDP, gross domestic product. Basically, our entire economy, if it was to be liquidated, if it was to be exchanged for cash, it would amount to something around 10 trillion uh, Kenya shillings. Now, parliament, initially, the limit was a percentage, 50% of the 10 trillion 
uh, of, of the GDP. So in other words, if the GDP is at 10 trillion, you should not take debt that is more than 5 trillion, uh, 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 so, so, so to say. But then parliament changed that limit from a percentage to an absolute figure of 9 trillion uh, the year before, that is in 2019, and already within a year, uh, we had pushed uh, to 7.12. As by uh, 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 last month, uh, the estimates are at 8.41 trillion. So in other words, it's just about 600, 600 billion uh, that is left. If you include the deficit that the budget policy statement, uh, the, the official document that was released by uh, Treasury for, uh, for discussion uh, uh, to, to one week ago, uh, and will be published next week, I think on Friday or thereabout, um, then we are talking about an extra deficit of another uh, about a trillion. In other words, this figure will be surpassed. What does that mean? Where is the problem? I submit that I think the problem is not a problem of limits. It's a problem of prudence. It's a problem of values. It's a problem of uh, uh, the, the, the stewardship within which uh, the public resources are spent. So, but importantly to say that debt uh, as we stand now, Kenya's public debt is now mostly from external sources. So the graph I have there shows you up to June of 2020. Uh, we are still trying to get, uh, I mean, the numbers, but they are not going to be very different. They're just going to, I think it's moved now to 40, uh, 48, 49% and 51%. The yellow line is external debt. This is debt that is procured from external sources. So from the Euro bonds, World Bank, uh, other governments, um, and all these other, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, external sources. The blue line is domestic, uh, domestic uh, 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 debt. Now you notice that we started in 2012, um, and we could do the numbers back uh, into the into the other years. But basically, we were uh, at about 55 percent uh, uh, just about uh, uh, six, seven years ago, um, and our domestic debt has been uh, uh, declining percentage-wise, but not in absolute figures. In absolute figures, of course, the numbers are going up and I will show that. Um, so there is a story here because what happens is that external debt comes in foreign currency. So it comes that currently our highest uh, uh, currency uh, is in US dollar. When the dollar fluctuates, so for instance, take an example that we borrowed, uh, you know, a thousand shillings, a thousand dollars when the dollar was at 100 shillings. Now the dollar is at 109 shillings. And therefore it means that we, our, our net present value of that debt is not a thousand dollars, but basically it's a thousand, sorry, it's a, I mean, it's a thousand dollars, but it's no longer, uh, you know, a hundred thousand Kenya shillings, but rather it's 109,000. Now multiply that with the millions and billions that we have borrowed and you see what that means. So every time there's a fluctuation and an increase, especially in the exchange rate, uh, particularly what has happened when we, we have, you know, we have uh, less uh, uh, exports uh, are going out, then, so that's how the picture looks like uh, as we stand. But this table, and I put it there deliberately, uh, 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 not, to, not to show you just many numbers, uh, but I wanted to show something that there's a trend. Now, the first line there is on domestic debt. This is the money that we borrow locally. And what you notice is that between 2012 and 2018, the very last column, uh, if you can see, uh, 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 you know, the very last column, you see the change. Uh, so there's not been any change about uh, uh, monies that uh, we borrow from the central bank. So the, because the central bank, as much as it's a banker for government, it is also a bank that lends money to government uh, sometimes uh, uh, to plug in, uh, uh, you know, short-term uh, uh, deficits, uh, for instance, end month uh, salary payments and the like. But the commercial banks, uh, we have had a decline, uh, which is shown by the other figure that showed that domestic debt borrowing has actually been going down. But I want you to look at the external debt and look at the multilateral. So multilateral are basically uh, the equivalents of the World Bank um, uh, uh, and other and other institutions that basically uh, would put money in a pocket in a in a in a port and then uh, uh, lend it to Kenya. Bilateral is mostly government to government, uh, you know, a single actor uh, to the government of Kenya. But the commercial banks, the external commercial banks, the money they have lent to Kenya has grown by 14%. Now, you know very well that commercial banks provide these loans at a higher rate, at a shorter term, 
at a higher rate, and therefore that means uh, that the, then the repayment uh, is quite is quite high. Um, and there you will put things like the Exim Bank of China uh, and other you know uh, uh, institutions, uh, the Paris Club and the like. What that means is that uh, because of this fluctuation, then our debt has become more expensive over time. And in the Kenyan case, I would compare these to, for instance, the loan you would take from your circle and the loan you would take from a bank. There's a big difference uh, because of the commercial nature of the two. But what explains why things are the way they are? The graph on your left is, is taken uh, from the latest document we have from the National Treasury, and it shows the fiscal deficit. So what is a fiscal deficit? A fiscal deficit is saying that this year, uh, and for, for, for purposes of those who might not be aware, our financial year runs from the month of August to the month of June the following year. So currently, we are in the financial year 2020-2021, which will end on June 30th of this year. Now, for each of those financial year, a budget has to be approved by June. Now, when the budget has to be approved, there are two critical figures in any budget or critical items in every budget. First is where are we going to get the money from? That is revenues. And in, 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 in government terms, we, our greatest source, our main source of revenue is what we call ordinary revenue. Ordinary revenue basically is the tax that we pay and any other charges uh, you know, that, 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 that are incurred uh, for, for, for purposes of that. So when we talk about taxes is uh, income tax, which includes uh, corporate tax and uh, pay as you earn, import duty, all the money, you, all the taxes that you pay when you, you buy something from outside the country, Excise duty, which basically is a tax that is charged for transactions and any uh, uh, you know uh, that happen, including on airtime um, uh, and bank transactions and the like. And then finally, uh, uh, we have VAT, value added tax, uh, which is charged on uh, consumption goods. Then other aspect of ordinary revenue is what you call non-tax revenue. So when you go to the Ministry of Lands, you pay some fees uh, for purposes. When you're buying land, you know you pay stamp duty. Uh, when you go to uh, uh, to NTSA, you pay certain fees uh, there for you to be processed. Uh, uh, when you go to uh, immigration office and you need a new passport, then you pay certain. So that's what constitutes our ordinary revenue. Now a deficit occurs when your ordinary revenue and you are, so the second item is expenditure. So the first one is where shall we get the money from? The second one is where shall we spend the money? So our total expenditure. So the difference between our total estimated expenditure and our total estimated revenue is the deficit. Now the goal of, as you see that graph, that green, the green side, uh, with a black line is that the idea is to reduce the deficit. But the truth of the matter is that in the last couple of years, the deficit has been increasing and the table on the side shows you uh, what has been happening. So the first column is the year. This is in uh, the year. Uh, the year is not in billions. It's just basically in calendar year, but the, the numbers are in billions in column two and column three. My apology for that. The deficit in the approved budget. So this is the deficit with which the budget that goes to parliament is approved. So in 2014, 2015, there was a difference of 417 billion. So that is the money that has to be borrowed. But notice what, by the time the financial year was coming to an end, the deficit had been re revised upwards. In other words, we could not raise the 417, but we actually raised our deficit uh, 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 to 732. And therefore the deficit went up by 76%. So this is basically saying that you earn 100 shillings, your expenditure is 150 shillings, but somewhere along the middle of the month, you decide that I, as much as I am not going to be able to raise, I mean, to, to raise the 150 shillings, I'm going to raise my expenditure to 180 shillings. So what that means is that you have increased how much you must borrow. And that has been the trend. Every year, the deficit has been revised upwards. And that explains the situation uh, that we are in, when deficits are, first of all, in the first place, are approved. And deficits are not wrong in and of themselves. 
a deficit is not wrong in and of itself because we know very well that we have unlimited needs, but we have finite resources. We have only limited resources. And therefore what we must do is that we must find a way to bridge this gap, to be able to invest in areas that will bring a return on investment. And therefore over time, hopefully, uh, you know, uh, 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 then we are able to pay that uh, money money back. So the but but then you ask okay fine so the deficit has been rising well maybe that is not a problem um, uh, we have not been able to meet all our but perhaps the amount of money we are spending in uh, paying for the debt that we have incurred uh, is also matching well with our income. So this graph shows you how much, how the money we pay in debt. Now, let me go back a step back and say that debt, just like your own loan, when you take a loan, is a fast charge. Now, if you take a loan from a circle, you allow the circle to have something, you allow, your, your, you, you, you allow the circle to reach out uh, to your employer to do something called check-off system. What that means, is that before the money hits your account, the loan money has already been taken away. The same case if you do to the bank. Uh, as soon as your salary checks in, the first thing they do is that they withdraw, they take their share of the debt uh, repayment. So just like that, even in the public space, uh, in the public sector, debt is a fast charge to the income of the country. In other words, it means that it's fast you pay debt before you can pay health workers. It's first you pay debt before you can provide resources for education uh, and other. So as you notice, our share uh, of ordinary revenue uh, that is being used to debt repayment has been rising uh, from about 16% uh, to 42% in 2018, 2019. Uh, and by last financial year, 1920, we were at about 55%. Now this shows you the debt servicing. So it's the same, same, same story, but then compared. Uh, so external debt servicing is erratic, and that could be indicative of a poor restructuring of debt and, 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 and when they fall you. Now, the other thing that is not only that the amount that we are paying to debt is rising, but has also been going through some almost like, you know, uh, it, it, it's a bit erratic. So when you look at, uh, you know, uh, total external debt service, the yellow line and then the blue line, you realize there are years, uh, uh, there are years when we have paid about 76% uh, in 2012, you know, uh, 2013. Uh, then 74%, then 55%, then 69%, then 69%, then 52%. In other words, it seems to fluctuate and be erratic, which says that perhaps there is no clear scheduling of how much money we expect to pay year on year. Uh, 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 and that could be explained by the fact that since we take commercial debt uh, that needs to be paid at certain points, so when, for instance, uh, the first payment uh, for the SGR loan came due uh, sometime mid of Corona, I mean, COVID period last year, then there's a lot of money that needed to be spent uh, in that process and basically almost left our coffers uh, uh, dry. So, but as debt service uh, uh, grows from one year to the next, allocations for critical services, especially uh, devolution and county governments have been dropping, as well as the share of revenue uh, 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 has also not grown as much. So we have three columns there. The first column is debt service. So this is how much we have paid year on year to public debt. Now, the second column is a total ordinary revenue. Uh, uh, it, it's debatable whether it's the shareable revenue because a few mathematics normally go on uh, before we arrive at the shareable revenue. But yes, that's the amount of money uh, we have been raising uh, uh, on each, uh, each financial, financial year. Now, then counties allocation is a third figure. This is the amount of money that goes to facilitate the 47 counties uh, our devolution. Now you look at the percentages and you realize that on average, the amount we are spending year on year on public debt has been growing at an average of 30%. Our income has been growing at an average of 13%. Up to 2019, 2020, 
uh, where we still were at about uh, uh, 12 or thereabout. Uh, and, in, and in 2021, we suspect it's gonna be at about 5%, if not 4% in terms of growth, uh, uh, if not a negative growth. But the country allocation has been growing at 10% and has been growing at a decreasing rate, as you notice, 19%, 8%, 7%, 5%, and the last two years, it has been at 0%. And if you factored in inflation, then you are talking of about negative uh, negative 3% and then negative 8% uh, 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 in the last two financial, financial years. Now, friends, this must concern us. There is no way the amount of money you are paying to debt can be growing at two times, this year almost at three times, the amount of the growth in your own revenue and in your own income. I come back again to your income. So your income is still 100 shillings. Uh, you've been revising your, uh, uh, you know, your, uh, your deficit year month on month, even if your revenue is not changing, um, uh, uh, you know, almost by uh, uh, 13, 14 percent. Um, your, 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 your revenue is actually not uh, increasing at that much rate, but the amount of money you are spending on repaying debt is going up year, month on month. Now, um, I don't need to describe what would happen at the end, uh, but I, I think suffice to say that then there is a crisis. Uh, uh. Now, 2019-2020 uh, was disrupted by COVID. Now, COVID disrupted a unique, in a very special way, disrupted the most critical of our incomes because it disrupted labor. It is disrupted. Now, I talked about four, four, four types of income tax, of tax, sorry. The most critical one is income tax. Now, income tax includes corporate tax and pay as you earn that we all pay uh, 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 to, to the government. Now, that has accounted for the longest time for about, it was at about 47, 48% a couple of years ago. It's been declining up to about 42% as a total share of the amount. In other words, if we collect 100 shillings, 42 shillings have been coming from corporate tax. Now, when companies closed and people lost their jobs and government reduced uh, the amount of tax, then that accounts for the decline that we have seen uh, in revenue. But that was not matched by a decrease in expenditure. In fact, in another uh, space, I did comment, and I still hold that, that it seems that everything else is declining apart from public expenditure, which is something that must concern, concern us. And because it, and then public expenditure is growing, this year alone, we are looking at a, a deficit of one trillion against an expenditure, a total expenditure of about three trillion. We can only uh, raise uh, uh, two tri trillion, but at a reality of what I have just said, that because incomes have gone down, and what happens with the incomes? When incomes go down, VAT income, so VAT import duty, and excise duty are factors of incomes. So when you don't have an income, you cannot import a car. You know, uh, you may indulge in some activities, basically uh, of addiction, to be able to try and manage your stresses, uh, and that may explain some some limited growth uh, in VAT. Uh, but but essentially, you know, uh, 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 you know, it, it, it's it's not a growth uh, in the in the economy. Um, allow me to proceed. Um, so, but if this is the picture, one would argue, but where does the money go? Oh, rightly, yes, we have incurred a lot of public debt. Uh, this money should be going somewhere. Now, I want first of all for you to imagine that you, earn, you still earn your 100 shillings per month and your employer on a good day tells you, I'm going to add you 80 shillings to your monthly income. Now, when you add somebody, 80 shillings, in other words, if you increase their salary by 80%, it will be visible, whether in indulgence or in investment. Now, if we are saying that we have borrowed and guaranteed loans of about 8.41 trillion Kenya shillings against a GDP of 10 trillion, therefore you're saying that we have injected into the economy over the last couple of years, 84% of the total wealth of that economy, then it should be visible. And if it is not visible in investment, then it is visible elsewhere. 
but I will not go uh, into that line of conversation. I'm sure we will come to it in the discussion. But where does the money go? So we did some analysis because under other, other international budget partnership, we are interested in the question of equity and I'll speak a bit uh, before I come to the end of my presentation. So we found that the proportion of the money overall goes to infrastructure heavy projects. That's to energy, to infrastructure, ICT takes on average 44%. Environment, uh, water, and natural resources, and largely these are water projects, uh, takes 39%. Uh, and of course, you know, the examples of Aurora and Kimorer dams all fall in here. Uh, uh, agriculture, rural development, uh, you know, rural and urban development, whether you think about the irrigation schemes uh, uh, that, was that are supposed to have provided food security and what has happened, health takes about 11%. A general economic uh, and commercial affairs takes another 11% and the like. So our money is going, so in other words, if 44% of this money is going to energy infrastructure at ICT, we should be seeing fairly heavy investments. Are you able to point some of those investments? Uh, uh, and I'm not saying they are not there, but I think it's a critical conversation. But there's a second question which we have not yet answered of how equitably distributed are these projects? Are they concentrated in certain areas of the country or are they, are they sufficiently distributed? Are roads being done across the country? Are railway lines being opened across the country? Are energy projects being take, undertaken? ICT projects, environmental and water projects. Is there equity where we can say, okay, fine. Yeah, yes, we are carrying a burden, but we are also having a shared uh, enjoyment of the benefits of that burden. But, there was an argument that perhaps during the COVID time is when we have borrowed much more than we borrowed during the other times of the year. So we did a comparison uh, of the 2017-2018, 2018-2019 2018, and 2019-2020 uh, uh, towards the financial. And we, we realized that the growth in debt, which, which, which matches the increase I talked about uh, 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 in raising of the fiscal deficit uh, 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 yeah, during the year actually has not changed. So COVID is not an explanatory factor per se to the rise in, this has been a trend that has been going on and on um, 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 and, and perhaps deserves much more uh, conversation. But more importantly is that transparency of how these whole processes happen still seems to be wanting credit where it is due. We have much more information on public debt today than we did a couple of years ago. You now can log onto the uh, central bank website and you can be able to see how much money was received from treasury bills, from domestic borrowing and from international borrowing month on month. As we talk, you, can, you could check that. So yes, we have, but we don't know the terms and the conditions of, these, uh, 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 of some of these debts. We don't know uh, uh, what we have committed as a country. You know what is the you know the the, 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 the you know uh, what will be the penalties of non-compliance? Because I I dare to submit that it is rich it has reached a point where we are borrowing to refinance other debts. So basically borrowing Peter to pay uh, Tom as it were. What then does this mean, friends? Our spending is not in tandem with our revenue. Growing deficits means that we shall reach a point we cannot sustain our expenses anymore. Now we know countries that have reached that point that they would not be able uh, to pay uh, 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 their expenses. Whether you think about paying for public services, paying salaries, and even just generally running the economy. But since public debt and pensions, now I did not discuss about pensions because time could not allow me, but suffice to me for me to explain to you colleagues that uh, we are um, um, uh, uh, in a bigger crisis. And the crisis is that in the year eight, 1985, some of us were still very young, between 1985 and 1990, the government of Kenya, uh, as part of uh, the international conditions for being able to access uh, uh, credit services and other support, agreed to something called the Structural Adjustment Program. And many of you will remember about the famous Golden Handshake, where people uh, working in the public service were retrenched. That was uh, the Golden Handshake was just a soft side of it. They were retrenched and in tandem, employments were frozen. 
So what happened is that the last crew to be employed and mass within public service, excluding teachers and doctors and nurses, were employed between 1985 and 1990. Now, assuming those people were between the, were the age of 25 years of age, just about having finished uh, their formal uh, uh, education, therefore, majority of those people, including when uh, 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 you know, the retirement age was increased from 55 to 60, are retiring in the period 2020. Sorry, uh, they're, they're retiring in the, in the period, they were to retire in the period, uh, 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 in the period uh, uh, 2015 to 2020, but because their years were increased by five, majority of them are retiring between 2020 and 2025. What tells us? And because of that, and in fact, in fact, the period from 2015 also is there. So in the last two years, the amount of money we are paying to pensions has doubled from about 54 billion uh, to 110 billion. And I think this year we are going to be spending about 150 billion. Now, pensions is a liability just like public debt. It's a fast charge to the consolidated fund services. Now, what that means is that we are going to have a huge population uh, of people living in the formal uh, public service and they do not have pension. Currently, anybody who has a pensioner in their home, whether it's their father, their mother, or uncle, knows that it's taking almost about three, on average, about two years to process their pensions. Uh, the, 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 well, the, on one side, somebody can argue it's all an administrative process, but I dare say, on the other hand, I think there's no money. And therefore, and lastly, we are aging closer and closer to an economic shutdown and recession. Some of us believe we are already in a recession, and a recession, generally described is a time when you cannot meet your obligations, your day-to-day -day, uh, obligations uh, uh, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a government. And you have to rely on treasury bills, to issue treasury bills. And when they are bought, then you pay salaries or you transfer money uh, money to, to counties. It's when you are surviving bank uh, account uh, to be able to uh, run, run, run your expense. So we are edging closer and closer, especially if we do not do something about how to raise uh, uh, in it. So what next? I believe that a full austerity uh, 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 where we only have a focus on essential spending for a period of time. But secondly, that we credibility where we spend money based on what we, we planned our budget and not just shift monies and then increase the deficit as is the case. Fiscal consolidation has been in the paper. So basically the process of trying to cut expenditures and match them with the revenues, but it must be an active process and not just uh, uh, in the papers. You, write, you read the budget policy statement, the draft, uh, it talks about the journey to fiscal consolidation. In fact, the graph I showed you earlier, the title there is actually fiscal consolidation, but it must be an active thing because as I have explained, it is now, that we need to bite the bullet uh, uh, before later on, then, then it will be. I think parliament must have a cap on how much can be spent on debt servicing per year as a counter check to borrowing limits and conditions agreed. In other words, instead of saying this is the much you can borrow, we know very well the issue is not how much you can borrow. The bigger issue is that do you have the money to actually service that public debt? And it's a recommendation we have made. We think it is time to actually set a limit. How much money can we as a country, when you take a loan uh, to a, from a circle, there's a limit beyond which you cannot take, you cannot pay per month because you must be left with money to run your life. I think it is 30%. You cannot pay more than 70% uh, to loan and taxes and everything else. Uh, you must be left at least with 30%. Why can't we do that uh, within this particular context so that we limit how much we can spend year on year on debt servicing? And that technically would limit how much then, uh, because as I say, the appetite for borrowing seems to be at, a, at an all time high. Uh, and it's more a question of prudence and stewardship than a question of you know, technical arguments as they are being made. Debt restructuring towards more concessional terms, I think that has been language. And uh, this is saying taking loans that are longer term low rate uh, uh, and the, therefore the repayment is much more uh, uh, easier. And finally, as I close, I think we cannot address this situation unless there is physical discipline. 
especially during budget revisions. As you have seen, budget revisions, supplementary budgets that are not even subjected to public participation are a big, are a big challenge. So I think that colleagues, uh, this is a call uh, for us uh, to be able to say, can we, can we engage? Can we ask the right questions? Can we engage our members of parliament because they are the ones who approve these deficits year on year? Uh, 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 can, can we do something? Because when it starts biting, it will not bite in the neighbor's house only, it will bite all of us. However much we may feel that, that we, are, we, are, we, are, we are exempted. Uh, from uh, uh, the effects of this. And with that, thank you very much and may the Lord bless you. Wow, wow. Over to you, Mr. Wow, hey, hey, hey. Uh, I, Dr. Rugo, this is, uh, I'm writing my notes and um, I think uh, I, I, I want to say a big thank you for painting the picture as it is. Um, you have clearly painted out the picture in terms of uh, the effects of borrowing, the failures by institution like parliament, uh, transparency in the whole subject of public debt, and, uh, and also pointed out clearly that uh, uh, we cannot run away from engaging. So I think with this, I would want to open the conversation. Uh, I can see the chats already uh, coming on. I see uh, on the chat, Zach pointing out that this is an important conversation that we should be having. That is uh, Zach Gaia. Uh, I can see uh, Daniel Wambete is saying that the pension payout now makes sense due to the increased retirement age. I've been wondering why. I, I, I have been following pensions even for my, uh, I think I, I'm doing at the moment for, for two relatives and the reality is administrative processes I used to delay come tomorrow. I'm actually following for, uh, uh, as in two relatives and uh, it's very clear what, why then are we here? I think uh, so that uh, we do not, uh, oh, uh, we allow this. Uh, if you could uh, raise your hands, I'm happy to uh, give you an opportunity to share. I see Daisy and Dan has already raised a hand. So if I can get three, uh, then we can come. So participants, I see uh, Daisy, I also see Nelson. Uh, yes, so we can have uh, Daisy, Nelson, and then uh, let me see if there's any, and then I can come back. So I see Daisy, uh, Daisy, uh, uh, let's go start. Uh, Daisy, I'm done, there you go. Thank you. Good evening. And thank you, Dr. Rugo, for the presentation. Happy New Year. Um, so my, my, my question, I don't know if it's a comment or a question, however, it's very clear from what you show as from what we've seen is that we have a clear spending problem and uh, a parliament that refuses to rein in the executive. Now it has been posited by some that um, the reason why um, this problem persists, particularly with parliament, is because of the CDF being pegged to the total budget. And so the bigger the budget, regardless of deficit, the more CDF goes to them. So it's almost like a bribery, you know? Um, so it doesn't matter as long as um, they get their pound of flesh, they're willing to let the, the uh, executive continue on. Uh, Daisy, I lost your last, uh, like the last... 15 seconds. Oh, sorry. I was saying that, uh, that it has been suggested by some that the problem of being able to rein in the executive by parliament is because of the, the CDF is pegged to a percentage of the budget. So my question is, given the grim reality that we are facing, the failure of parliament to rein in the executive and and clear lack of a will to do that because even in the midst of the uh, of the uh, crisis, I mean, because it's clear that there's a crisis, the executive has now put out another budget with a trillion shilling deficit. Do you think that the current leadership, parliament, and the executive would have any willingness whatsoever? to address this challenge, if pleas were made? If not, do you think then, as the KCPF and a coalition of uh, publicly spirited Kenyans, that 
we can put together a coalition that begins to speak very clearly about this issue and state what needs to be done, including what Jaindi Casero um, uh, put in his article recently, that we should have an external and an independent audit of our debt register. Thank you. Um, thanks, Daisy. Uh, can we, you can then put your hand down. Let, let's have uh, Nelson. Okay, thank you. Uh, hi, Daktari. Uh, so I'm Nelson Miner from Nyeri County, a uh, member of the Nyeri County Budget Economic Forum. And uh, the debt issue is, has been of concern to us also. So maybe just to clarify to, to us, uh, Daktari, is uh, that in 2018, Parliament uh, pushed the, the, the ceiling from 5 trillion to 9 trillion. And currently there is talk that Treasury wants Parliament to push these to 12 trillion. So maybe you can clarify that if it's true. Uh, secondly, is it true that uh, World Bank set a certain limit that is uh, like, you know, like the, the crisis point at 77% of debt to GDP? And the currently we are at 71%. So is this maybe something uh, you can clarify for us? Thank you. Um, um, uh, uh, you can put your hand down, Nelson, so that I can see if there's anyone else who is uh, coming. Um, Abraham, as we wait for the rest to, uh, to, to, to raise their hands, I just wanted to, if you could also comment on the issue of uh, uh, management. As you are aware, currently before Parliament is a uh, proposed legislation on what we call the public debt, uh, the public debt management uh, bill. Um, the, 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 uh, um, uh, how, uh, because you have the, in terms of institutions, you have the central bank, you have the, uh, the debt management office, and then you have the legislature. So is, is beyond the legislature, uh, looking at the other institution is our, is our, uh, and I'm looking at it from this dimension, Abraham, uh, look at the Kenya Revenue Authority. Uh, the World Bank recommendations on splitting and separating the roles between the policy and the agency. Uh, do we need to consider strengthening, for example, the debt management framework? Uh, and uh, I, I would want to hear your comments on, uh, is it an issue of strengthening uh, these institutions, giving them autonomy? Look at what Kerry does. Uh, they're able to publish, they're able to engage, they're discussing how uh, collection of uh, revenue. Uh, uh, that is not the case, uh, for example, on the debt management office. So uh, uh, comment on the issue of institutions. I would also want to, if you could to hear from you about um, the only issue about what message does does the uh, does the <laughs> the restructuring. Um, as you're aware, on the uh, if I if I was to uh, just bring to your attention on the press release released by the Treasury. Uh, Monday, 11th uh, January 2021, uh, on the issue of uh, the suspension, uh, like um, uh, uh, the, the we call the application of um, debt service suspension initiative with the Paris Club. Uh, what does this signify, particularly on uh, the stability uh, and then our ability to finance our debt? I know I'm a moderator. I should not be asking much, but I'm a Kenyan also who is interested on these issues. And um, yeah, because when you start uh, asking for the suspension of the payment of your debt, what does that signify? Uh, I see one hand from Nyamai, if you could allow- to can, I, can, I, can I take those first uh, and then okay. I'll come- uh, Go ahead. Yeah. Nyamai, please bear with us. Yeah, kindly. Um, so so thanks, thanks, Daisy. Um, I, I, I completely uh, 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 associate with your uh, sentiments. I think we do not have the will and the possibility for, uh, in my opinion, uh, for, the, for the institutions you have outlined to make a difference in this country. Now, and it's because of uh, the transactional nature of our politics, where it's about scratch my back, I scratch your back and everybody is at peace. Um, as you know, that uh, the Constituency Development Fund, and I will mention, I'll speak to it uh, because you, you did uh, mention, 
uh, initially was pegged as a percentage of income tax of 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 of, 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 of income um, to the country. But when it was changed, uh, I still think it is unconstitutional. But when it was changed, it was made a national government uh, constituents development fund and was pegged as a percentage of the national government revenue. I mean, national government shareable portion of the shareable revenue. And therefore, there already is an incentive that the higher the amount uh, uh, that goes to the national government, uh, uh, the higher the amount that goes uh, to, the, to the members uh, of parliament. As you know very well that uh, our politics has turned to be you know, um, a fairly you know, a, a, a mix of very strange bedfellows, if I, I was to say that. And therefore, I do not think, uh, and I say this because I have raised this conversation uh, in different spaces, I do not think uh, the people who have the right intentions have the capacity, have, have the possible, uh, the opportunity uh, to make uh, the changes, and those who have the possibilities do not have the right intentions. And therefore, I am all for uh, an alternative uh, citizen drive. Uh, it, it did happen in Jamaica, uh, where, where, where citizens pushed quite a bit of, you know, the thinking on how to address some of these questions. Um, uh, it did make quite some progress, and I think, uh, to, in all honesty, I think there is there are alternatives that people need to come together, and we can all pull together and and see what we 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 we, we can do, and perhaps identify peoples who are going to champion uh, these 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 processes. Because the truth of the matter is. But when uh, the real effects start being felt, and, and I fear that some of them will be felt a lot uh, in the later part of this uh, year, uh, uh, then it will have a, a great, great, uh, great, great implications. Uh, uh, Nelson, yes, um, I, I did speak to the fact, I didn't speak to the 12 trillion, but I have seen the recommendation, uh, the request by uh, the National Treasury to raise the amount borrowable, if I was to use that word, uh, from 9 trillion to 12 trillion. As I have said, I do not think the problem is a problem of limits. It's a problem uh, of, uh, 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 of prudence. It's, a, it's an ethical problem. Um, uh, it, it, it's a problem of where the, 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 the people do not pursue this from a point of stewardship, uh, but instead, uh, uh, you know, nothing stops us from developing our country by borrowing 50% uh, of, our, of, of, our, of, our, of our GDP. You know, by the time 9 trillion, uh, was being approved, I suspect that a lot had been borrowed much more because the, right, the, the rate at which we have grown, uh, the debt has grown from the time that it was raised from, uh, 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 you know, uh, that, that was raised from the, from, the, from the time it was raised from 50%, which is the 5 trillion that you've talked about, uh, to, uh, to 9 trillion. The numbers have grown very fast and we are quickly approaching 9 trillion. So basically, you're trying to say that this person has a problem of, you know, has a debt problem, you know, uh, his way of spending his money is really bad. So let's allow him much more space uh, to borrow from more, you know, from, 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 from more places, you know, and, and more people. Uh, and be more indebtedness. You know, you, you all know we have dealt with such kind of fellows and it's not normally, uh, so, so that addiction, if I may use uh, that word, that, that, that obsession, that there is no way there can be thought of alternatives of what to cut. But because again of our transactional politics, as I said earlier, it seems that like almost every project has got uh, a sponsor and therefore it cannot be touched, you know, it's, it, because we have asked question, why can't you reduce this? Why can't you reduce that? No, 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 that, that must continue, that must continue. I think we need to be rational. We need to be realistic with what uh, is, is, is possible. Yes, World Bank has got measures, IMF has measures, uh, but remember, uh, and as I said, I'll be very, very honest uh, uh, here. All these are banks, you know, uh, 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 they all, what they are interested in is their interest, is that they sell money. And they make their profits and make their, 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 their investors happy, their shareholders who have put money into those uh, uh, structures. So you cannot expect that they will help you fix. Their only interest is that you are able to pay back, regardless of whether you are fully. So what I think is important is not so much the World Bank uh, 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 limits or the IMF limits, many of which we have already broken. Uh, but really, it's asking the very basic question, are we able to pay back? And secondly, are we spending this money in the rightful places? If those two questions are no, then we can't, we shouldn't be borrowing anymore. We shouldn't, you know, uh, we should rein in uh, that, that, that kind of uh, 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 process. 
Kimosop, yes. I'm at a point where I don't think we need more structures and more institutions because the problem is not a problem of structure and institutions. It boils down to a question of leadership, stewardship, and commitment to make a difference in our country. I don't think by moving the, 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 the public debt management office to an authority will make any big, because there will still be sub, you know, there will still be a sub actor within the national treasury. And that's where decisions are made at higher levels. There will still be a substructure to parliament. If parliament that is elected by the people themselves, what higher authority, you know, can you claim uh, to be able to make a difference? So, so I don't think that, uh, uh, yes, there is an argument to be made for institutional strengthening. Yes, there is an argument to be made of certain reforms where decisions can be uh, uh, integrated. But as long as those who have the call of duty do not hold their responsibility, you know, with the integrity and with the prudence that it requires, then we have, we have a problem. And that is related uh, to a question, uh, uh, to a concern uh, uh, that uh, uh, Bernard Ocheng asked, you know, are these discussions placed on public? Uh, the public management debt uh, 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 paper is never subjected, for instance, uh, to, uh, to public participation and public consultations. And those are the things I said we are trying to push for, for instance, and I would invite everybody here to actually take that as a matter of interest, uh, to ask questions about what is the debt, where does the, who, you know, what is the debt register looking like? Who do we owe? How much do we owe them? What are the conditions behind the, those, uh, what, we, what, we, what, we, what we owe? Yes, the budget policy statement provides an opportunity for us to engage, uh, but really is a debt discussion um, uh, 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 held. But even as you engage, you want to engage in a process where your voice counts and can be counted uh, uh, as, as, as it were. Yes, debt suspension, Kimosop, it's the only way to go. At this particular point, uh, 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 I don't think where we are, there is a bet, there is another route uh, 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 that will be devoid of negotiating, suspending our repayments. Because our repayments this year alone, this financial year alone, if we pay everything we owe, we are going to spend about 70. Uh, I've just looked at the numbers uh, as of uh, December 31st. We had collected 726.5 billion uh, and we paid 413. So in other words, we spent 57% by half year on debt. Now, you know very well that we are not likely to collect the 1.5, 1.6 trillion we had hoped to collect in this financial year because of the effects that I did explain a bit earlier. Uh, and therefore that tells you uh, that unless we rein in, first of all, as a Quick first aid measure, we must reduce the bleeding uh, from the revenue, and that is by the renegotiating uh, how much we are paying month on month. I mean, I mean, month on month uh, uh, to, to our creditors, then get into the process of then working on our side of the of the uh, of the of the of the expenditure. Um, so, so, so that's my take. I we could take the next round uh, of questions. I'm not able to answer all the questions as because a lot of these uh, I should have given a disclaimer at the beginning are. Uh, are my personal opinions. They are betrayed by the research we have done at the International Budget Partnership, uh, 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 and they are based on evidence. So none of the numbers I'm quoting are numbers from my head. They are official numbers uh, as published. Thanks. Uh, you know, I'm so tempted, but I have to be, to, to, to be disciplined. Uh, so I'll go to Violet. I'll, go to, I'll start with Nyamai and then go to Violet. And then there is a person called... Uh, uh, Gechek, uh, I think, uh, I hope I have pronounced your name right. Uh, yes, um, some of us come from places where there is a problem between T and D and P and V. So please accept us as we are. So uh, let me start with the difficult one, uh, Gechek. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, my name is Geshe. I uh, put the other initials uh, PK. Uh, together, so okay. don't worry, it confuses you. Now I have two issues. Uh, the first one is uh, I was hoping that uh, Abraham will give us who who do we own the highest? Is, is it China? Is it the World Bank? Is it uh, who? So and what percentage do we owe them? Number two, the, the international uh, budgetary forum or the, the, the organization that you run, 
is it possible to have a national conversation where we call people to discuss these things? Because you have just said we are in almost a recession or we are heading there. Do we want to wait until we get okay. there? Because this way we will all suffer. Is it possible for, for there to be um, a, a forum uh, where we invite our stakeholders to discuss these things? Because we can't wait for the government, the executive, neither the parliament to do this because they are the culprits and they are not going to call for a meeting to discuss them. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Geshe. Uh, I, I appreciate that. Um, Nyamai was there, so I'm trying, before I come to you, Violet, I have seen you. Uh, Nyamai, are you still there? Okay, we will wait for you. Uh, please jump in, uh, Violet. You're muted, Violet. Violet, you're muted. Okay. Yeah, thank you for using the line. So I just wanted to ask uh, this question. Is the, the CS Treasury, like all these suggestions that are being made, even by the civil society organizations, even IBP is also putting uh, these suggestions of debt restructuring. I just want to know, is the government listening because Every time we tell them uh, regarding the public debt, it's like they are ignoring. So I just wanted to know uh, whether they listen to even what IBP is saying and also other bodies as well, even like TISA. I just wanted to know whether they con consult them and whether they actually listen to the suggestions and act on it. because. From the presentation on the debt, uh, we can see that debt has been uh, rising every year. Every financial year, you can find that 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020. You're seeing it is on the rise, and yet they have experts on board eh, who they reach out to. But I just wonder to listen to the advice that is being given. Thank you. Very passionate Kenyan there, uh, uh, and uh, uh, we need more of that passion and stirring up. Uh, Abraham, you are speaking to the right people. Go ahead. Abraham, you're muted. Abraham. Um, you know, even IBC had a problem uh, transmitting election results, so uh, we understand technological challenges. Uh, uh, so we will give you time. Meanwhile, as you as you prepare, please be also looking at what we have on the side chat. You can see the comments by additional comments by Benjamin Ochele. Uh, who's talked about, uh, do you think our financial governance challenges are 100% caused by unwillingness of the executive and the legislature to rein on uh, this decision, the policy options? Uh, Daisy's also pointed out the, I, I, uh, that uh, the Jamaican example is a very good one. <laughs> um, but then Daniel has talked about uh, the missing uh, what are we missing in terms of government? When does it come to investing? Uh, where, where, what are we not getting on return on investment on energy infrastructure and agriculture? Abraham, were you successful? I was just uh, filling in the um, gap as you address. Are we good? Abraham, on, are you able to unmute now? Okay. I, I can I can just uh, as you as as you as you address the technology, Geshe. I think uh, it is possible. There is data available on um, on uh, whom do we owe. So I, I can answer that question. I know Abraham is uh, Abraham. Until you are you're on, I am I'm, I am 
I'll be standing in if it's okay with you. Okay. Uh, so Geshe, I think I can be able to share the, some data from uh, on public debts on whom do we owe. So our top 10 creditors bilateral as at December 2018, we had China, uh, which was number one uh, on the country. Uh, the, the contribution bilaterally was at 70.6%. Uh, uh, and that uh, uh, followed by Japan at 11.1.7%, France at 62 uh, uh, 62 um, at 7%, uh, followed by, so in terms of the, this is in billions uh, in US dollars. Eh? Uh, then uh, number three, France, number four, Germany. Number five was Italy, six, uh, uh, Belgium, uh, US uh, seven, Finland eight, and then nine, Denmark. In, um, uh, now I'm back. Uh, good. Um, so that's the advantage of having a moderator who has read. So please <laughs> go thank ahead. You, thank you. <laughs> and I can confirm that uh, uh, your numbers are correct. Uh, yes, so China is our leading uh, uh, bilateral donor and World Bank is our leading uh, multilateral donor uh, at uh, 25% uh, and 21% in terms of the categories, uh, in terms of the amounts they lend uh, to, to the country. But remember I said, uh, uh, these institutions, these international institutions, they are great, but they are also in business. So again, we should always keep that in mind. Let me jump straight to, uh, to Gesha's question. Uh, so you've been answered on who do we owe. Can we have a forum to discuss these questions? Yes, and there are forums, the International Budget Partnership and other partners. Uh, 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 I know Violet and a couple of other people who have had this uh, chime in here are part of it. We do organize these forums, uh, but as Violet has asked, and I can confirm, I don't know if they do so, uh, because uh, there are many, all the issues we have raised here, we have raised them with parliament, and severally I have left parliament with a conviction that somebody was listening, uh, but then when I see the final decisions, I am I'm left more uh, at a loss as to what exactly uh, may have transpired uh, in that particular uh, particular particular process. Um, then, um, uh, uh, I, but but that does not mean that we must not keep knocking. You know, uh, if I may use the biblical example, there is a story given in Luke chapter eighteen about this lady who needed justice, and every morning she went to, to knock at the door of the judge. Uh, those must have been good days. Uh, and you could actually trace the judge's house and just go and keep knocking. And we are told that she knocked until uh, the judge said uh, that even if I fear, I fear no God and no man, I must give this woman justice or else she shall wear me out. I think as Kenyans, we must uh, approach that uh, kind of uh, idea. But I know very well that not all of us wake up every morning uh, uh, to deal on matters public debt. Uh, and to you know to to try and answer questions about where is the money. We wake up to go and look for food for our families, school fees for our children, uh, and go to you know to fulfill other obligations uh, uh, that, that, that are critical. But I think we create spaces. Yes, every year we have about four national forums. One should be coming in about two weeks' time when this question actually will be a critical piece uh, of discussion. So if you are interested, please do follow us on Twitter. Uh, or do reach out uh, and we shall include you uh, in that particular conversation. The idea being that we must keep speaking and saying, uh, uh, talking about these things. We must continue to give alternative views and perspectives. And at a minimum, we must keep saying the right thing needs to be done uh, because that's why we elect our, our leaders uh, to be able to lead us uh, in that process. Um, thanks, Abraham. Uh, I can see Nyama is back. In addition, is Obed and uh, and, and Nu uh, Ahmed. So uh, let me start with Nyama uh, and then Obed and then uh, Ahmed. Uh, Nyama. Uh, thank you very much for this opportunity and thanks to uh, Dr. Ruga for this timely conversation. Uh, my question was, my, it's, it's more of a concern. Is there, um, is there a threshold of how much should be borrowed uh, domestically and how much should be borrowed from outside? Because uh, when you look at the, the statistics at uh, CBK, you'll find that the amount that is being borrowed internally or here domestically is going up. And, I, I, and I'm very sure that has got an implication with, uh, with our businesses and other uh, small uh, enterprises that we have in the country. Thank you. Um, thanks, Nyamai. Um, 
Uh, Obed. Good. Thank you, guys. Um, good afternoon. Uh, thank you. you for the wonderful session. Um, mine is a question. Eh? I remember one time the president was having, uh, I think, a, a, a national address. I think it was in Mombasa. And one of the journalists asked him about uh, our debt ratio and how it was a concern. And of course, the president in answering, he said that uh, countries like Japan have even much more debt ratio than, you know, uh, than, uh, than their, their GDP. And if you check some of the countries, you find like Portugal, their national debt to GDP is 119%, Barbados, 117%. Countries like Singapore, they are at 109%. United States, I think it is at 106% of their GDP. And so the question somebody would be asking is, is um, uh, for us, we can see we are still below maybe 60, I don't know whether it is below 60% or 70%. And so the question would be, which for us in context as a country, where would we be safe, you know, in terms of uh, national debt to GDP ratio? Thank you. Um, thanks, uh, Obed. Uh, let's go to Ahmed. Hi. Hi, Ahmed. Hello. 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 This is Nur Ahmed from Mandara. Yes, Ahmed. My question is, the the depth, the huge depth we have is related to corruption. And uh, what are we doing about corruption? Because the money we borrow is still is, is, is being stolen by by people who are an authority or who are in power. The second question is, most of this information you are giving us now is not available at the public domain. The common man does not know these statistics and does, does not even understand. How do we relate this to the common man? Thank you. Those are my two questions. Um, thanks, Ahmed. Uh, this is yeah. the first time we're having a participant from Mandera. This is really encouraging uh, and uh, great to have you. Uh, over to you, um, uh, Ams. Um, thank you. Thank you, Kimo Sopan. I should have uh, said thank you for standing in. Uh, my computer just hanged and on one screen and could not move to another screen, so I had to change to my phone. Uh, but nonetheless, we can continue. Um, I will start with uh, 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 Nyamai's uh, question. There's no threshold for um, either or. Um, so it's really where uh, you, you are able to, uh, to, to get more money uh, at, uh, at the cheapest rate. So this is boils down to pure you know, uh, uh, to pure uh, business sense, what makes business sense. Um, uh, external markets go uh, into more, uh, uh, you know, longer concessional uh, kind of engagement, but the current government policy is to go into more borrowing domestically. Um, that of course has got a huge implication because it crowds out. It means that you and I compete with government uh, in accessing loans from government. And, and it's an interesting thing because government also, government institutions also hold uh, bank accounts uh, with some of these uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, financial institutions in Kenya, uh, uh, you know, uh, both uh, uh, commercial, uh, but also at the CDK. So is it possible one could argue that uh, perhaps the government is borrowing its own money um, uh, and, and paying it at a, at a return uh, of interest, uh, it's, 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 a, it's a question uh, that, that is worth exploring, but yes, there's no limit as to how much they can choose to borrow 100% locally. Uh, that of course has got the huge implications. Uh, when we talked about the interest caps, uh, the, 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 the banks were not, were not reluctant to, uh, to lend to private investors uh, because of the interest caps. It's because it made more sense uh, with the interest caps to lend to government. Even if they were taking at a one or 2% lower, they are an assured creditor. They will pay back because after all, you and I will still continue paying taxes and therefore they, they, they have that. So there's no, there's, there's no limit, and they, but the implications are huge, uh, especially right now, uh, when you don't have guarantees, uh, when you don't have a business that you can go and show uh, you know, uh, its current account and how uh, liquid it is and therefore viable for, 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 for to access uh, public uh, credit. The credit guarantee scheme has taken forever to pick up. 
uh, which was supposed to assure and support businesses and individuals uh, to be able to borrow money and therefore they can sustain businesses uh, and, the, and the like. Obed, debt ratio, debt, debt, debt ratio. I think, I think it's, 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 so when you think about debt ratio is to think about, um, you know, if I earn a hundred shillings and you earn a thousand shillings, and both of us have a, 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 a loan to pay of 200 shillings, then my loan, if, I, if, if, if all I have is 100 shillings, uh, sorry, if my total wealth, let me use that example. If all I have is 100 shillings, but I have a loan to pay of 200 shillings, and all you have is a thousand shillings, for instance, um, and what you have to pay, uh, is 200, just as an example, our ratio, our debt to our, our total wealth uh, ratio is very, very different. So are we comparing apples for apples? Are we comparing? You cannot compare Kenya. Uh, what is the GDP size of Japan? I think it's almost five, six times uh, bigger than the one of Kenya. What about the US? Uh, and what kind of loans are these that they have? Some of them are very long concessional loans of 75 years, 50 years. Uh, uh, you know, they have long maturity at terms. But what investments are they putting? You know, uh, I mean, let's take an example. So Japan has, you know, the huge uh, uh, ratio that they have uh, of debt uh, to GDP ratio. Uh, but every car in front of you is a Toyota. So the investments and their, the, the business model they are pursuing as a country means that that is not money that they will be unable to pay when they need to pay. And do they need to pay it in the first place? You know, maybe it's money that they keep rolling uh, into the economy and it's continuing to engage uh, in economic activity. So I think it's important for us to compare apples for apples and not apples and mangoes and say, and say oh, look at these poor apples, when will they ever grow big and be like you know, uh, uh, mangoes? I think it is, it, it, that comparison, I think uh, uh, it's just a political experience kind of a, a, a comparison, but I think you need to compare likes for likes. If you're saying countries that are the same GDP level, you know, you take on a country like Portugal, yes. Uh, 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 you know, take, take, take an example like, you know, uh, Portugal. Portugal has got a huge economic crisis. Yes, they're at 106%, uh, but they have huge problems because of the same debt that we are talking, we are talking about. Secondly, and I've just seen Daisy uh, raise it and I wanted to raise it also. They also, they borrow in their own currency. You know, they borrow in Japanese yen and in the US dollar. We borrow in a foreign currency. So in other words, we need to export something for us to gain foreign currency. Uh, 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 and when we are a net importer, so in other words, we are importing more than we are exporting, it means basically uh, we are spending more money. Um, the money we are buying is more expensive than the money we are selling uh, as, 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 as it were. So, so I think the, the, there is no, the argument of a safe debt level is based on two things that I had said earlier. One, ability to pay back, and two, investment uh, 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 investment uh, in productive uh, 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 economy. And let me combine that uh, with Ahmed. Ahmed, earlier in the conversation, and I had expected this question to come up, I argue that when you put in 80% of somebody's total wealth, if you have 100 shillings uh, with you, and then I come and give you 80 shillings on top of that, in other words, I put in 80 shillings into, uh, into, your, into, into your pocket. There's a lot you can do. Now, we need to see, we can see it in two ways. You can either see it in that you go just indulgent, you disappear from the village uh, and, uh, and just go and uh, squander the money and use it, you know, just having fun because you have more money than, you know, uh, much more money. Or you will put it in investment. And therefore, if we struggle to find the investment, perhaps all these private investments we are seeing are the proceeds of corruption. Now, and there is an argument uh, to be sustained along that line uh, because uh, we have huge cases, we have huge scandals, uh, uh, you know, of, of billions. You know, it's interesting that just the other day we used to talk about you know hundreds of thousands. You know, now we are talking of scandals that are at billion level. And if we cannot see the projects for which we are paying for these monies, or the projects are not necessarily to the level we expect of this money, then the money must have gone somewhere. And we have had politicians even argue that some of this money has made its way 
uh, uh, to, to private. So could it be that we are using public means to achieve private, uh, 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 private? And how do we make this conversation a common one inch conversation uh, for all of us to be able to engage? It's a difficult conversation, but I think we are trying. Forums like these ones and many others that we try uh, to break this down uh, 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 should try and achieve that kind of a purpose because corruption and uh, abuse thrives in darkness, thrives in opaque systems, thrives with lack of transparency. And therefore our job must be to continually push uh, uh, that information needs to be uh, uh, available. But as a country, we also need to ask about our own software, our own uh, mode of operation. Have we actually come to accept that extraction is the only way to make it? Have we come to accept that wealth, regardless of the means with which you, you access that wealth, uh, is, is, the, is the only way? Could it be that part of the reason why even our young people are depressed and burning schools, that they see no value in working hard? You know? uh, could it be that actually we have reached a point where we are saying hard work is for fools? Smart people work smart. Uh, they know how to cut deals. They know who to talk to. They know where to be present in which tables to be, to be, to be, to be present. There is a bigger question there, and I don't have time to pursue that argument uh, in this uh, particular forum. But I think there, there is more evidence to show that some of the money within the economy is going into the wrong places. As we are talking about debt that we cannot pay, we are also struggling with supply of real estate, both in commercial and residential uh, uh, terms in millions of square feet in Nairobi alone. In other words, we have more buildings than we can ever occupy, than the economy can ever consume. We have projects all over the place you travel this country, there are hotels popping up everywhere, huge five-star almost level kind of uh, investments and many other investments that I may not know of. Could it be that that's where actually uh, the trillions we are talking about have, have ended? I'm asking questions that I don't have the numbers uh, to substantiate, but if we cannot see um, actual physical investments, then we should be able to say, okay, fine, if the money has entered the system, then it must have gone into, into something. And with that, I want to thank all of you uh, uh, for the conversation. I think this conversation needs, needs to continue, uh, needs to be sustained, uh, and needs to be developed. But please, let this not be just one of those things you listen and you go home and say, oh, things are so bad, what shall we ever do in our lives? No, 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 you can do something, you can do something. Uh, uh, it's a question of what is it? And at a minimum, ask a question, send a question to parliament, ask your question to your member of parliament, publish it out there. Thank you very much. Um, thanks so much, uh, um, uh, Abraham. I think uh, that was quite commendable. I want to request the audience if we can clap uh, digitally for, for, for those who are able to know how to clap digitally. I can see Daisy, I can see Geshe, Nelson, uh, fantastic, fantastic. Please receive it. Uh, we are in a new uh, normal where you have to uh, accept this digital. Sorry, we are losing you, Kim, you're coming, uh, you're breaking. Now, I was saying that uh, please accept the, the digital claps uh, now that uh, we cannot do it in the physical. You've done a fantastic job. It is very evident that this conversation needs to be continued. Uh, at, the, at KCPF, we are ready to uh, have another round if people want to know, because we've just started the conversation. For example, uh, uh, there is the whole issue about um, uh, why the, are we having returns for our for the for the debts that we are borrowing? Uh, even the gender dimension, I can see Daisy has been doing a fantastic uh, work in terms of uh, 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 two thirds and gender work. Uh, the, the, it affects us differently, and um, I, I, I am not the. Uh, uh, just to summarize, debt in itself, as Zabram has said, is not a bad thing. It is what are we borrowing to do? Where is this money going to? And is there accountability, transparency in the process? So thanks so much. I can see comments from Angela saying public debt is crippling the potential uh, of a number of countries in Africa, uh, and uh, giving the example of Zimbabwe. Uh, Daisy, we need to take some bold steps to reclaim our country. The first thing that we recognize that the current political leadership cannot get us out of the mess. 
Uh, and uh, we therefore have to organize and develop a roadmap for recovery and take our people. Uh, Pastor Murungi has said, thank you. I want to say that uh, we, 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 we are happy to continue with these conversations. Feel free to get in touch with us. Uh, you can write to us an email. You can call our offices uh, on things that we need to bring it and, and organize such engagements uh, because such conversations are important in moving and advancing our, our, our country forward. Uh, to say a big thank you for finding time to join us this evening. We don't take it for granted. Uh, if you can allow me in one or two minutes, I have my chairperson in our midst, uh, that is uh, Charles Kanjama. And I would want him to make a few remarks from my side. I want to say a big thank you, Abraham. Looking forward to more of this conversation between uh, KCPF and IBP and other uh, partners even as we build uh, an informed and a society that is accountable. I like your last uh, parting shot, Abraham, that uh, corruption and misuse of uh, public resources thrives in opaque systems. So we have to build accountable systems. With that, I want to welcome my chair, Charles. Charles, Karibu uh, Okay, th thank you. Thank you, Vincent. And uh, thank you to our hosts. I think that has been a very insightful presentation. For me, I'll uh, first start by thanking uh, our host and, of course, uh, our moderator for our job very well done. This was our inaugural session as Kenya Christian Professionals Forum of what you're calling the Professionals Roundtable. Uh, this is something we want to do uh, monthly uh, through a webinar format, and we'll be engaging our professionals on topics of uh, professional development and improvement. So we encourage you to share widely uh, the notices that you're going to be spreading. Uh, we also encourage feedback and comments on how we can improve the professional roundtable. You can put them in the chat here, or you can share them with us through WhatsApp or any other means. Uh, we are focused as KCPF on trying to grow our membership base and also strengthening the professional dimension of organization, Kenya Christian Professionals Forum. So we really are delighted in this uh, first activity and uh, it has gone very well. And so many of you have remained with us until the end. Um, apart from that, I think I'd also be asking you to visit the website of KCPF. We have a calendar with many activities planned for the year. I will also be having another monthly uh, webinar now on our thematic areas, which is life, family, religion, good governance, and uh, value-based education. So those are things that we'll be having every month, and uh, we, we will be having other engagements and you can check on our website to get uh, more details and information. For those of you who would like to become members, you can contact our secretariat, you can get information on the website, and there, there's a process by which you can become a member. Thank you very much. Have a nice uh, evening and a nice weekend ahead. Uh, thanks, Chair. We started with a prayer. Uh, if we could uh, conclude with a word of prayer. Um, I think I saw uh, Muriu passed um, uh, in the chat and we appreciate everybody. Ross Muriungi, if you could uh, uh, pray for us uh, briefly as we conclude. Ross, are you there? Uh, Ross, I can see you there if you are mute. Okay. Uh, it looks like it is taking long. Uh, patience, uh, close for us with the word of prayer. And Lord, we thank you for the wonderful session that you've had about the public debt crisis in Kenya. As Christian professionals, we pray that you may give us wisdom to engage on this matter, and that also you may give our government the wisdom to deal with the issue as well. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Um, good night, people. Uh, and thank you so much for taking time. I'm looking forward to the next one. Uh, Dr. Rugo, you can see there are many things we can, we'll take it up uh, that have come up that we will need to discuss moving forward. Uh, but nice evening and uh, God bless you all.